right, folks, welcome to another edition of Take Heart. So today we're going to be in Luke chapter 17. So go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 17. And we're going to be covering verses 11 through 19. In the heading of your Bible, you might have the wording, 10 lepers cleansed. So that's going to be kind of the, the section that we're in. So let's, let's begin. So verse 11 in Luke chapter 17 tells us, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And I'm reading from the New King James, which is now it happened. But if you had the King James, it would say, And it came to pass. So what we can just simply from the verse, first part of the first verse that we're looking at is that God's timing is always perfect and it's always planned. There's always a purpose for the things that, that happen in our lives and we see that here in the life of Jesus. It says as he went to Jerusalem, but he passed through the middle of these two areas, Samaria and Galilee. So the final destination for him was obviously Jerusalem, but on the way we're going to find there's going to be some divine appointments. And so in that, in our own lives, you know, as you go throughout your day, whether it be at work or as you're interacting with folks, whether it be at the market or wherever you're going, just look for those moments in time, anticipate them. Ask the Lord, say, Father, show me the times in which I can be used by you. Show me the things that I can, I can be used for your glory. So in this that we see that he's passing through, he's on his way to Jerusalem, but he's going right through the middle of this area, Samaria and Galilee. Look at verse 12, it says, As Then as he entered a certain village, there he met ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. So now we find out in this divine appointment, we find out the timing. It says, Then as he entered. And we notice a location, a certain village. So these divine appointments that we're looking at, they contain those two elements. There's a timing essence of it that says, Then in a certain village. It, it doesn't tell us exactly the village, but there is a, a location. And we notice the people that he met. It says there were met him 10 men. So obviously that's straightforward, but it says they were lepers. And the fact is they stood afar off. So what does that tell us? That tells us that there was um, Jews and Gentiles mixed in. We're gonna find out later on in the story while I'm telling you there's a Gentile because in the Jewish tradition or in the law, they had to stand afar off if they were lepers. I'm going to read a few verses uh, that kind of clarify that for us. So Leviticus chapter 13, 46, you can write down in your notes. It says, he shall be unclean all the days he has the sore, he shall be unclean. We're talking about leprosy. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. So we find out that leprosy was one of those diseases that needed to be excommunicated away from the camp so it would not spread. In Matthew 8, chapter 2, as well as Mark chapter 1, verse 40, those, both of those uh, accounts give the same story of also a leper. And when the lepers approached Jesus at that point, they told him in Matthew 8, 2, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean because we see that they stood afar off they were unclean. And we, we find out through scripture there's always parallels to different things going on. If you remember Moses and Aaron and Miriam, that Miriam was struck with leprosy and it indicated or it gave us a, a, a picture of sin and what sin does in our lives. It separates us from Christ. Isaiah 59 2 tells us, but your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So we find out sin in general separates us from Christ. It's that division between us and Christ. So he passes through the area. The 10 lepers meet him. They're standing afar off. Look what it tells us in verse 13. It says, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. So we find out they're lifting up their voices and one of the conditions, one of the results of leprosy is it would cause the voice to be raspy. So you could imagine Jesus is hearing this, this raspy voice. And what, he's, what they're telling him is they say Jesus, which is Jehovah's salvation. And they also say master. What that word literally means is a chief, a commander. And what that's doing is it's giving him recognition for his authority. 
in Luke, in the Gospels, he is the only one that uses this word master and uses it seven times throughout his Gospel. Here's a few of the instances. Listen to this. Luke 8, 24. And in this, we see not only the, the recognition of his authority, but we, it comes clear to us. So Luke 8, 24 tells us, And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased and they were calm. This is when the disciples and him, Jesus, were in the boat, and they woke him up. And they called him Master, Master, Chief, Commander, the one of all authority. Later on in the same book, the same chapter rather of Luke 8, verse 45 tells us, And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the multitudes throng you and press you, and you say, Who touched me? It's this master, this recognition of his authority. And these ten lepers realize that. And look what they're asking Jehovah's salvation, the commander, to do, have mercy on us, or another word to say, would have compassion on us. Psalm 145.8 tells us, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. And we know in Ephesians that, you know, we've been saved by grace through faith. But prior to those verses, listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, but God who is rich in mercy, the same thing we're talking about here, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. So similar to these lepers who were standing the far off, our lives were far off from Christ. Lamentations chapter 3, 22 through 24. We've heard these verses and it's always good to go back to them. It says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. We have a promise of that. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. So these 10 lepers are, are lifting up with their raspy voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. What happens next? Verse 14 tells us. So when Jesus, when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was as they went, they were cleansed. We notice that they were crying out to, to the Lord in, in these raspy voices. But we notice verse 14, it says, when he saw them, you know, obviously he heard them. But in this, that we see that, that God not only hears our prayers, but he sees, he perceives of what we're going through. Matthew 27, 54, this is after the crucifixion of Christ and the earthquake and all these things that happened. Listen to the, the account of the centurion. Matthew 27, 54 tells us the centurion saw the earthquake and the things that happened. And what did he say? Truly, this was the Son of God. So we see here, we see this, this, this fact that Jesus sees them, he hears them. But what does he do next? He commands them. He says, go show yourselves to the priest. And that word show literally means to display or to exhibit. And we would kind of get the implication in this, the fact that he's saying, go show yourselves to the priest. Well, in order to go sh show yourselves to the priest, it would indicate that there had already been healing that had taken place. And it says, go to the priest. Matthew 5, 17 says, Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So all throughout the life of Christ, he's, he's abiding by the Jewish law. And he, he does the same thing here for these ten lepers. He tells them, go show yourselves, display yourselves to the priest. Verses, in, or rather chapters 13 and 14 of Leviticus give us the idea or the the exact laws that was required for leprosy. And throughout that, those two chapters in Leviticus 13 and 14, we hear the word content, the words continually, priest shall examine, the priest shall examine. So in that we see this representation of, of Christ. He examines us. You know, what, what happened? The Lord says, you know, without the um, 
shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So the Father, how does he view us now as forgiven? The same thing here, it says, as they went on their way, they were cleansed. So we see there was perfect timing in the situation because it wasn't until they went on their way that they were, they were cleansed. So they had something to do. They had, they had to be obedient in leaving. Jesus told them, go show yourselves to the priest. He didn't say, just, just hang out a while with me. He said, you have to go. You have to do something. So their f- action or their faith was necessary in this healing. In order for them to, to receive the full cleansing, they had to leave. And it tells us, and so as, it, as they went, they were cleansed. James 2.17 tells us, thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead and we see that in the lives of these ten men they had to go and it tells us as they went they were cleansed it wasn't that they when they got to the priest it says as they were on their way the good thing about that is we see the the depiction or if we could look at it in in the way of leprosy and sin that we have this amazing father who so much loves us and it desires a relationship with us that he doesn't want anything in the way of our relationship. 1 John 1 9 tells us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we notice in our situation what do we need to do similar to these these lepers they had to go what do we need to do we need to confess and then what what in turn happened they were cleansed or they were healed on the way and for us we just read in 1 John 1 1, 9 that our sins are forgiven and we are cleansed so let's continue in the journey of this section verse 15 tells us and one of them when he saw that he was healed returned and with a loud voice glorified God it says one of them when he saw that he was healed and the word used for healed literally means to be made whole 1 Peter 2, 24, who himself bore our sins in his body, his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes or whose wounds we are healed. Similar to these, to the leper here, he was made whole, he was healed in the same way we are when we come and confess to him because of what was done on the cross. So we see in that, in that, 1 Peter 2.24 verse that it was the crucifixion is what healed. We're free from sin. We were declared righteous. Salvation from punishment. Eternal separation from God. We notice this one leper. It says one of them when he saw he returned. And what does it say? It says with a loud voice he glorified God. Interesting. The words the word loud is megas and the word voice is phone. So it says with a megaphone, if you want to take a literal translation. So no longer is this voice raspy, barely able to to say what he has to say. But now, because he is healed, he is cleansed. His his vocal cords are healed. But we know as Christians, as believers, we are new creations in Christ, just like this leper. From a physical standpoint, he has been healed. He is a new creation. What does he do? With this megaphone, with this loud voice, he glorified God to praise, to extol, to magnify, to celebrate. A few verses. Psalm 150 verse 6 tells us, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. John 12, 28 tells us, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the one leper that returned came with this megaphone, came with this loud voice and glorified magnified and celebrated Christ. Verse 16, not only did he come with a loud voice, but what happens as well, it says, and he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And then at the very end of the verse, it says, and he was a Samaritan. So this falling down on his face, what exactly was that? So what we're seeing is the, the lowest, lowliest profound form of reverence. And the Hebrew word for worship means to bow down. Revelation 7, 11 through 12, Pastor Kevin went through this. And the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures. 
And what did they do? And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So he's down on this, this reverence form, down on his face, giving thanks to him. Psalm 118.1 tells us, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And we see that in the life of this one leper who came back. And there's an interesting point that Luke makes sure to stress at the very end of verse 16. It's its own sentence. And it says, He was a Samaritan. So if you go back to the origin of the, the Samaritans, they were a mix between Jews and Gentiles. So they weren't you know, obviously considered a, a pure Jew. John 4, 9 kind of shed some light on that. When Jesus went to the well, listen to this, John 4, 9, Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. So we see that this, this one individual that was a Gentile, that was a Samaritan, came back and did this amazing act of worship to the Lord. And we notice that in this, that this mixed crowd of the Jews and the Gentiles of these 10 lepers, that there was no division between the sinners. They were all sinners. And what do we know in God's word? That he desires all men to be saved, but none should perish. Colossians 3.11 tells us, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And we see that in this situation that there was 10 lepers, Jews and Gentiles mixed, and this Gentile came back and praised and thanked the Lord. Look at verse 17 and 18 with me. He says, so Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any, not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And we see how that Samaritan is viewed. He's a foreigner. So Jesus asked three questions in these two verses. You know, were, were there not ten? Were, where are the other nine? And the only one returned? In that, what do we see? We see that despite the fact that it was both Jew and Gentile, that, that Christ desires a relationship with us. He desired a relationship with the Samaritan, not simply going through the motions. So, you know, Jesus told him, go and show yourselves to the priest. But it was the fact that this one Samaritan, when realizing that his life was changed, he needed to stop and thank God for giving him the, for what had happened. And he, he desired to give God the glory that was due for what he had done. Psalm 96, 8 and 9 tell us, Give to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come to, into His courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. Revelation chapter 4, verses 9 through 11, similar to what we read earlier, but listen to this. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. And we see you know, when Jesus asking these three questions, did they not come to give God the glory? And we see that's what he desires. He desires that close relationship that even a, a foreigner as it says a stranger is what it says in the King James not a Jew from another race someone who wasn't even a part of the blessings Ephesians chapter 2 12 and 13 for us that are Gentiles this is amazing it says Ephesians chapter 2 12 and 13 tell us that at that time you were without Christ us Gentiles being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, meaning you were not Jew, you, did, you weren't guaranteed the promises, and strangers from the covenants of promise. We have having no hope and without God in the world. Verse 13 in chapter two of Ephesians is key. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. 
And we see that in the life of the Samaritan leper. He was brought near by, the, by the, just the mercy and the grace of God. Last, chap, last verse in this section, it says, And he said to him, Jesus said to the Samaritan leper, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Remember, he was down on the ground praising and worshiping God, giving him the glory. But he says, Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Or if you had King James, your faith has made you whole. And the word well or whole that's being used here literally means to save, saving from disease and its effects, and restoring to health. We see that in the, in the life of this man, the Samaritan. Luke 8, 48, from the flow of blood that when the gal touched the garment of Jesus, and he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. If you remember, Jesus was in the crowd, and she had the faith. If I simply touch his garment, I will be healed. And that's what happened. And Jesus said, he said to his disciples, as we read earlier, you know, who touched me? And then Peter said, Master, when we saw that word master, who touched me? Everyone's pushing up against you. Just like with this, this daughter, as he called her, this lady with the flow of blood. Your faith has made you well. And I'm going to end it with these two reference verses in Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace you have been saved through faith, just like with this leper, and not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast. So as we see through, through this account that Jesus gave when he went through the area, that there were 10 healed, but one came back to give God the glory. And that divine appointment changed his life forever. And so I encourage you guys to maybe stop and think of the things that the Lord has done for you. Not just go through the motions, but thank him for the little things. You know, as, it, as it, he told the leper, go show yourselves to the priest continue in your in your walk but when you're cleansed he wanted that glory to come back to him he wanted that relationship so hopefully you guys have been encouraged and until next time god bless